Hey guys, this is Ghost Pit Miner coming at you for the power of YouTube through the internet itself. Okay guys, so in today's video, we're going to be unboxing and installing Cooler Master's Wraith Ripper. Stay tuned for the video guys so I can show you how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up the Wraith Ripper box. So let's go ahead and take off the outside plastic first. Nothing like a brand new plastic unwrapped. Smells pretty good. And let's go ahead and take off the little stickers on the side so we can get to the inside of the box. Hmm, that's interesting. That says void on the sticker. I wonder if they use these for other things or if you void your warranty by opening up the box that would be kind of funny they probably just use them in a lot of different places but yeah so that says void on those stickers so let's go ahead and get it out of this box nice diagram of the wraith ripper on the back of it shows you what it's made out of and what comes in it here we go slide straight out just like that now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the box. Nice illustration of the RGB in the front and some specifications on the back. If you want to pause that and look at them, definitely go ahead and take a look at that. And look at that beautiful illustration of what this thing is made of. Very highly engineered and it does work very well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the thermals on this in a little bit. And let's go ahead and open the Wraith Ripper box itself. Let's see what they have in here, besides a Wraith Ripper. There we go, just open up that slide right there. A nice manual in there probably, beautiful, look at that beautiful. Very good, Wraith Ripper. Ryzen Thread Ripper, it says right on there, so you know exactly what this cooler is made for, not for any other type of CPU besides the Ryzen Thread Ripper. Nice branding on top. You don't see any Cooler Master logos anywhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Wraith Ripper. As you can see, it's a double tower heat sink with a 120 millimeter fan right in the middle of it with aluminum fins. So this definitely does really good with transferring heat. Let's take a look at the cabling on the outside right here. So we have one SATA power to power up the RGB and your fan header. This one is a four pin fan header. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. So there's uh, also a USB right in here. That's gonna be to plug into your motherboard so you can get into the Cooler Master's RGB software. What a beautiful CPU cooler. So let's go ahead and take it out of the box. What a massive cooler. Beautifully designed. And look at those seven heat pipes, guys. What a monster not bad at all definitely is going to be really well for pulling off my 12 core thread ripper and there's a amd ryzen logo on top let's go ahead and see what's underneath here pre-applied thermal paste very nice don't touch it and just put this back on until you actually put it on you don't want to have thermal paste all over the place so let's rest that aside and let's go ahead and see what's inside this little manual. So there's your warranty card and warranty information on the back. Okay. And your user guide. So let's go ahead and put this away nice and sturdy. We probably won't need this, so let's toss it aside. And this is what we're working with right now. So we have the Corsair dominator ram inside there and the thread ripper all ready for install 
So let's go ahead and grab our CPU cooler. And take off the beautiful plastic. Brand new, it smells so good, feels so good. Here we go, let's go ahead and install this CPU cooler. Take off the plastic shroud, of course. Put that aside. And let's go ahead and get started by installing this. So make sure all your cables are in the right place before you put it in. And here we go, guys. This is gonna be awesome. Looks like we're having some RAM clearance issues. Maybe if I move it a little bit. Nope, that's not gonna fit. The Dominator RAM are way too tall. So let me go ahead and show what I'm talking about. So as you see right here, Definitely not enough clearance. I can't even touch the Threadripper at all. Um, this RAM is way too tall, so we're gonna have to go shopping and get some new RAM, guys. Let's go to Best Buy. So I literally just came back from Best Buy. I bought all the RAM they had in stock that was compatible with my build. So we got the Vengeance LPX uh, from Corsair, and these are the 3000 megahertz, which this is actually gonna be really good to overclock with this build. So let's go ahead and plug these in and let's see if the clearance won't be an issue anymore. So that's the height difference as you can see right there. The Vengeance RAM is about half the size or half the height of the Dominator. We'll go ahead and put the Dominator RAM aside and we'll be using the LPX RAM today. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab the Wraith Ripper again. And this time, let's see if it fits. Not too bad at all, just lining up the holes. Now we have a lot of room for RAM clearance, no issues at all. So we're gonna hold that on sturdy, and we're gonna start with this screw right over here. We're just gonna tighten it just a little bit so it can hold, and going across to the next top one. And right over here, we're pretty much making a figure eight pattern on this. Threadripper CPU cooler, just like that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make sure to attach the USB cable. Right over here, definitely would have been hard to get to with that big GPU in the way. So let's go ahead and put that in place. Now we're talking, now all our wires are on there. And let's go ahead and screw that back in in the same fashion I was talking about before. Go ahead and line up those holes, put a little pressure in there so you can feel that it's in place. And let's go ahead and start screwing it in with the figure eight pattern, guys. Feels nice and tight on that one. Again, just go over it a couple times. I like to just make sure it's in place. Put a little bit of tension on those screws that you know you're in place. And then you're gonna go around and tighten them all the way up. Okay, so now that everything is nice and tight, let's go ahead and grab our USB connector and plug it into the USB header on the motherboard. Make sure everything's in the right direction. Go ahead and look at your pins and make sure you're putting them in properly. And there we go. Pretty much is plug and play from here on out and that's the way it should look. Let's go ahead and get that fan connector plugged in as well. So this is a four pin fan connector. Let's go ahead and put it through the back, get some cable management in there. And we're gonna plug it into the CPU fan header, just like that. Pretty easy stuff, guys. Plug it in and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get the power set up on this fan. So here's a SATA cable. Again, I like to be nice and neat, so we're gonna go ahead and put it through the back. And plug it in to, if you have an additional SATA cable, let's go ahead and plug it in. Power it up. 
and pretty much that's it guys so those are the three connectors you need on there to get that wraith ripper powered up so just make sure you have the usb connector plugged in the power connector plugged into the sata and your fan connector plugged into your cpu fan header and that's pretty much it let's go ahead and see how it looks thermally so as you see right here i do have it overclocked slightly so i have it set to 4.0 gigahertz and my CPU voltage is 1.4125 volts to the CPU and it's really just ripping through Cinebench look at it go not bad all 12 cores grinding out this picture right here rendering it pretty well a lot faster than my Ryzen 7 1700 so definitely a newer CPU and it is made for creation type of work creator type of work like this so not bad you know for a I think I got it for $2.99 it was on sale for Black Friday but so temperatures are pretty good I didn't see it go over 66 degrees Celsius so definitely it is doing its job and there we go not bad at all 5473 on Cinebench pretty good so definitely over like I was saying the Ryzen 7 1700X Hey guys, so overall this was a pretty good success. Besides a little RAM clearance issue, make sure when you are shopping for RAM that it's compatible with the Wraith Ripper. Besides that, this 200 watt PDP CPU cooler will definitely be great for anything I'll be doing. Creator work or gaming. So far I've seen everything below 70 degrees Celsius. Never really goes over 71 degrees Celsius even when I'm editing videos and playing games. So guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, and please subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I will see you in the next video. Go Spit Miner out.